Welcome to Venue Church. You are listening to a message from one of our weekly celebration services. You can check out our website at www.venuechurchonline.com for more information about our weekly service, connect groups, online giving, and a whole lot more. Thanks for listening and enjoy the message. Uh, I love that video. Good morning, y'all. Well, for those of you who don't know, my name is Tim Kraus, and uh, we have been talking for the last uh, couple weeks here about being coming fully engaged followers of Jesus Christ. Who's enjoyed that message, the messages so far? Who's enjoyed them? Anybody? You guys becoming more fully engaged? I got the loudest cheer from Pastor Sean. That was awesome. Uh, so I'm excited to be able to speak to you guys this morning. Um, it is an honor every time I get to speak to you all, but especially... This morning, because as you guys know, uh, Marla, myself, and our little family are going to be going on a journey. It's a long journey uh, from Avon Lake, Ohio to Austin, Texas. And it's crazy to think about it because, you know, 10 years ago, we made this same journey from Austin, Texas to Cleveland, Ohio. Now, we made that long trip along with Pastor Sean and Faith and, uh, and their five kids, I believe, at the time. It's hard to keep track, but I'm pretty sure that's what it was. And uh, little did we know that when we first arrived in Bay Village, Ohio, that the trip um, had only just begun. And now fast forward, here, 10 years later, right? And I just want to tell you guys that this morning, this was a difficult message to prepare for because we've been here for 10 years. And there's so many different um, memories and, and awesome stories and experiences and joys and pains and victories and struggles and some that would probably leave you guys laughing, maybe peeing your pants in laughter. Um, and some that maybe would leave you reaching for the Kleenex. Um, but I couldn't pick just one, and there were too many to go through all this morning. But I do want you to know that my goal this morning, I do have a goal, is to honor God, to honor my pastors, to honor the church, and, uh, and I want to do that by focusing on what I believe to be the heart and soul of Pastor Sean of Faith, of Venue Church, and of our Heavenly Father himself. Does that sound good? All right, y'all ready? Let's pray real quick. Father God, we thank you so much for this morning. I thank you, God, just for an opportunity to be used to speak. Um, None of us are worthy. We're all just willing vessels, and it is our privilege and honor to be able to um, speak, be used to speak, your words, hopefully, to other people's hearts so that they will be able to take one step closer to you. And that's my prayer this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so when we first moved back to Ohio from Texas, because I originally grew up in Ohio, uh, but when we first moved back, um, I would always get a question, one main question out here from all kinds of different people when they heard that we had moved from the beautiful city of Austin, Texas, to snowy, rainy, um, dreary Cleveland, Ohio, right? Some mistakenly would refer to Cleveland as the mistake by the lake. And uh, they would always ask us one question. That question was, why? Why Ohio? Why Cleveland? Why would you make that trip? How many know that oftentimes when we try to follow God, when we're trying to live as fully engaged followers of Christ, a lot of times other people will look at that and it won't make much sense. And they'll ask a question. They'll ask why, right? And I think that's awesome. They're asking these questions, why? Why are you still married to him or her after all these years and all the struggles? Why do you still believe in God after all you've been through? Why do you believe in a book that is outdated? Why do you believe in a God you can't even see? Why do you give 10% of your hard-earned money to a church? And why on earth would you move from Austin, Texas to Cleveland, Ohio? And as believers, this should be our favorite question to answer. Amen? Because when they ask us why, we get to answer with what? Who? In fact, this should be our goal in life, to live our lives in such a way that causes people to ask why. Because then we get to point them to the one who. The one who. See, I'm talking about the one who hung the stars. The one who spoke, let there be light. 
the one who breathed the breath of life into our lungs, the one who is all-powerful, almighty, all-loving, all-knowing, the one who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above what we were able to even think, ask, or imagine, the one who is the same yesterday, today, and forever, the one who set fire down from heaven, the one who parted the Red Sea, the one who loved us first, the one who sent his one and only son to die for us so that we might have life and live it to the fullest. The one who will never leave you nor forsake you. Y'all, I'm talking about the one and only, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the great I am, the one who. And that's the title of my message this morning, if you haven't guessed it yet. The one who. The one who. And before I go too far into the message, talking about the one who, I do want you guys to meditate and marinate on a question throughout the message, if you don't mind. And the question is, is he your one who? Is God your number one who? So 10 years ago, Sean, Faith, Marla, and myself, and our family started a trip called, which is now called Venue Church. And it wasn't easy. Who's ever been on a long trip before? Long trips can be fun, right? But also they can be difficult at times. And I have an acronym I'm going to be using throughout the message for the word trip. I love acronyms. Hopefully you guys do too. So trip, it's going to take time. There's going to be risk. There's going to be investment. And there's going to be some pain. You know, life is a journey, right? (laughs) Life is a trip, y'all. And sometimes it isn't easy. I'm talking about marriage, parenting, sickness, financial hardship, anxiety attacks, fighting fear and depression and discouragement, not giving up, and being able to make it on this trip called life, it's going to take some time, some risk, some investment, and some pain. Now, I promise you, I'm not trying to depress you all this morning. Um, There's good times in life too, amen? Experiences that are good, times of joy and laughter and celebration, but how many know it's in the middle of it? in the middle of the celebrations and the joys and and, and the laughter where we need God more than other times. Amen? It makes me think of that song, Another in the Fire. Love that song. Love that story. But how many know that God was with them all along? He didn't go anywhere. He's always been with them. But they especially needed him to show up where? In the fire. Now maybe this morning some of y'all are in the middle of it. And you need God to show up. Maybe some of y'all feel like you are in the fire. And you need God to show up in the fire with you this morning. Is that you? If it is, I got good news. More like a good book. It's not just any book. It's called the Holy Book. It's full of true stories of men and women who endured many God journeys. And we get to look at their stories and learn from them. And God uses their stories to speak directly to our stories. It's called the Bible. Any fans of the Bible here this morning? You got it on your phone? It's the Word of God, right? And as we're learning to become fully engaged followers of Jesus Christ, I could have picked many different stories that are in that awesome book called the Bible, but who better than our very own Lord and Jesus Christ, Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, to show us the way? Because he himself went on a trip. A long trip. Now, I need you guys to help a little crowd participation. I know this is the early service, but if you guys know the song and you don't want to hear me sing it by myself, you better sing along, right? So this is going to be a song about Jesus' trip. If you know it, here we go. I'm going to start it off. He came from heaven to (laughs) to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross, from the... From the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky, Lord, I lift your name on high. Okay, you guys can all mark down and you want to serve on your connect cards, but don't put worship team, okay? Um, Hey, we got to stay in our lane. I know my calling as well. So I love that song, and there's motions that go along with it, but we're going to save the motions for the second service. We're still letting that coffee take effect here. But... Um, And good job, y'all. I shouldn't have given you a hard time. You participated. I appreciate that. But Jesus' trip from heaven to earth, from the earth to the cross, from the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky, was similar in that it took what? It took 
it was a trip. It took time. It took risk. It took investment. And how many know that Jesus went through some pain? Let's look at that real quick. Jesus journeyed from heaven to earth. Hard for us to grasp that. But he went from king of kings to servant of servants. From worshipped on high. To despised by men. From praised by angels to humiliated on a cross. From being surrounded by the love of his heavenly father to being rejected and alone. Yeah, Jesus went on a trip. A long trip. And I think that just like people would ask us, why Ohio? Why Cleveland? Why venue? I think we should ask as well, why, Jesus? Why did you do it? What was your reason? What was his purpose? What was Jesus's why behind the what? Who's ever heard that servant at Venue Church? We like to talk about the why behind the what. Now, there's a phrase that we have probably are more familiar with, talking about what would Jesus do? WWJD, any bracelet holders out there, the WWJD bracelet? And it's talking about imitating what Jesus did, and I love that. But listen, if we only imitate what Jesus did, but we neglect to reflect on and look into why he did what he did. We will miss the heart and soul, the driving force, the eternal motivating factor behind the actions of Jesus Christ. And this is what I want to focus on this morning. See, I think if you look a little bit more closely at Jesus' answer to the why behind the what, you're going to find a who. And not just... So, so let's think about it this way. Not just the why behind the what, but the who behind the why. And more specifically, the one who. The one who. So I'm going to leave you guys with a couple thoughts regarding the one who. And we're going to go to Matthew 10, 40. And this is Jesus' words. The red letters, it says, Jesus says, Anyone who welcomes you welcomes me. And anyone who welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. And then again in John chapter 7, verse 16, Jesus answered, My teaching is not my own. It comes from the one who sent me. We're talking about Jesus' why behind the what and his who behind the why. And the first one is the one who sent me. See, Jesus didn't just come from heaven to earth because he was bored, y'all. He was sent. He was sent. And can I tell you something? Pastor Sean and Faith and Marla and myself and our families, we didn't just come from Austin, Texas to Cleveland, Ohio because we had nothing to do. Because we were bored or it just was on a whim. We were also sent by the same one who sent Jesus Christ. And of that I have no doubt. One of my favorite verses is Romans chapter 10, verse 15. And it says, and how can anyone preach unless they are sent? As is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. You should check out Pastor Sean of Faith. They have really good-looking feet. Now, (laughs) thank you. Thank you for the laughter. Now, if it's God's job to send us, if God is the sender, and it's his job to call us, then it's our job as the sendee, I'm not sure if that's a word or not, to be obedient. Can everybody say obedient? Pastor Sean was talking, I believe, last week a little bit about the journey that gave birth to Venue Church. And I wrote this down in my notes. He said it's a very simple thing he said. But he said, when God tells you to do something, you do it. Easier said than done, isn't it? Aren't you glad you guys have pastors who obey the voice of God? I said, aren't you guys glad you have pastors who are obedient to the voice and direction of God that when God sent them, They obeyed. They obeyed. Your life looks different when you are sent. See, someone who is sent by God lives on purpose for a purpose. Like a man or a woman on a mission. They are locked in. They are focused. They are what you might call fully engaged followers of Jesus Christ. Now, I want to encourage you guys this morning. You don't have to go from one part of the country to another part of the country in order to be sent. You don't have to be missionaries to be sent. But I do have a question for you. Where has God sent you then? Maybe it's your workplace. All right? Maybe it's the neighborhood you live in. Maybe you've been sent to minister and to encourage your neighbors. 
Maybe it's the gas station or grocery store that you frequently attend. Are you seeing people on a regular basis there? Maybe you've been sent there by God. The barbershop or even the salon you go to, the house you live in. Can I just say that we, as parents, need to make sure we are not minimizing our roles that we play. We are sent to do our best to be good fathers and good mothers to show those kids love. Amen? Maybe it's the church you attend. Maybe you're not just here to sit in the seat. Maybe God has sent you to venue church for a purpose. How would your life look different if you started living it as if you had been sent by God with a purpose to reach and to love those who are in your world? See, we don't have to go out into all the world to preach the gospel. We got to do it in our world, though, right? Who are you shoulder to shoulder with? Who are you close to? Who's in your vicinity? It's not by accident that God has you where he has you. And y'all, we need to start living as if we've been sent. Amen? Now we can see Jesus Christ, I think around 12 years old, even at that age, was locked into his purpose. It says in Luke 2.49, and this is kind of funny here, because as you know, Joseph and Mary were Jesus' parents, right? And I'm sure they were good parents, and we all make mistakes. But I would imagine that this is probably, they managed to pull off maybe the ultimate parent fail, if you will. Um, Who's ever lost their kid before? It happens, you know, maybe they, they wander off. We get that. But it's one thing to lose, like, your son or daughter. It's another thing, y'all, to lose God's only son, the Savior of the world. I mean, how do you explain that one to God? Hey, God, I know you guys kind of, you know, you entrusted me to kind of take care of your only son, the Messiah, the one who's supposed to save the world. And, uh, but, you know, if you could use that all-knowing power you have and help me locate him because we kind of lost him. Um, Luke chapter 2, verse 49, they finally find him, and they try to do the old finger-wagging thing at Jesus, but he's a little different than other kids. And he said back to them, why did you seek me? Did you not know that I must be about my father's business? Don't you know I must be about my father's business? Don't you know I've been sent by God for a higher purpose? Come on, peace, I'm on a mission here. Can I tell you something? It wasn't always easy, but if my wife, Marla, and I wouldn't have remained obedient, if we wouldn't have stayed planted at Venue Church under Pastor Sean and Faith's leadership for the past 10 years, we would have missed out on what God was wanting to do. To us and through us. Who wants to miss out on that? Who doesn't want to miss out on that? It takes obedience. It takes obedience. I don't know who this is for, but I believe God wants to tell you that he knows the desires of your heart. He knows. He knows, and he's a good God, and as long as they're good desires, he wants to give them to you, but he just needs you to be a little more patient. Give it some more time. Remain obedient. Remain faithful. Stay focused on God's purpose For your life. Can you do that? Amen. Now, just because you've been sent by the one doesn't mean it's going to be a walk in the park. How many know sometimes as Christians we make it sound like it's going to be an easy life? Once you come down and you say yes to Jesus, you're going to be floating on clouds and playing, this is a violin, I was going to say harp, playing some type of fun little instrument. It's just going to be, you know, just the, the best life ever. No more rain, only sunshine. Right? That's not the case, is it? Now, if it's a God trip that you're going on, it's a good trip. But you'd be tripping if you think it's going to be an easy trip. That's right. I said you'd be tripping. It's going to take time. There's going to be risk, investment, and pain. How many know even Jesus had times where it was rough? Mark 14, 36. We're familiar with this, and sometimes we can become too familiar with this where we become disconnected. But this is, this is a son crying out to his father. Jesus said, Abba, Father, everything is possible for you. Take this cup from me. Please don't make me have to do this. But he didn't stay there long, did he? Yet, not what I will, 
but what you will. Nevertheless, not my will, but what thy will. Jesus was obedient to the one who sent him. Obedient, y'all, even to the point of death on the cross. Pretty heavy stuff, I know. See, I believe that all God's children are sent. But let's be real. Not all of us are obedient. And in order for us to not just be sent, but go from being sent to be where God wants us to be, to say yes to that, we have to be obedient. So this morning, church, we are talking about becoming fully engaged followers of Jesus Christ. And if that's what you want, it's going to require, God will require your obedience. Obedience. Not the easiest thing. After being sent by God, Jesus knows his mission. He knows what his mission is, and he's ready to be in obedient, obedient to it. In fact, he actually states it, and uh, if we are going to be fully engaged followers of Jesus Christ, that our mission should line up with the mission of Jesus Christ. Do you agree with that? So here it is. Luke chapter 19, verse 10. For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save the one who is lost. Again, we're talking about the why behind the what, and Jesus says who behind the why, and the first one is the one who sent him, first and foremost. But the second is the one who is lost. Now, Jesus loves all of us, all of you, all of the time. Make no mistake on that. But he, is, he specifically came, he said, to seek and to save the one who is lost. So Jesus died for the whole world, but how many know he has a soft spot in his heart for the lost sheep. It says in Matthew 18, 12, Jesus himself says, what do you think? If a man owns a hundred sheep and one of them wanders away, will he not leave the 99 on the hills and go look for the one who wandered off? Do you feel lost this morning? Maybe you'd say, I don't know if I know God. Can I tell you if that's you this morning, that you can know him today? That you are the one who God sent his son to die for. And he's not waiting for you to be perfect, y'all. He's just waiting for you to say yes. Now, maybe you would say, I do know God. I would, I would say I'm a Christian. But maybe you've wandered off. And listen, I get it. It's not easy being a Christian sometimes, is it? It's not easy. It seems like there are so many pages in the Bible about do this and do that, or should I do this, or do that, and even life itself isn't easy sometimes. It is a long trip. It's going to take time. It's going to take some risk, investment, and there's going to be some pain, but can I tell you that Jesus tried to simplify it for us. He tried to take all those scriptures and all those pages, and he tried to to narrow it down so we had a good digestible uh, way of knowing what is the focus. Matthew twenty two thirty seven 37 through 39, Jesus was asked, what is the greatest commandment? I mean, that's the right person to ask, don't you think? This is where you lean in when you ask good questions to Jesus Christ. And he replies, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment, and the second is like it, love your neighbor as yourself. He answered it was one commandment with two parts, kind of like a two-in-one shampoo and conditioner, right? <laughs> one to get it cleaned up, and the other one leave it all nice and shiny. Both equally important. First part, love God. Second part, love others. Let me say that again. First part, love God. Second part, love others. Simple, right? That's it. And I want to tell you guys, for the 10 years we've been here at Venue Church. This has been the heartbeat of Pastor Sean and Faith. It hasn't changed. It'll never change. Love God. Love others. Are you guys on board with that? That you're on board with the heart and soul of Venue Church and God himself. But don't get it twisted. There is an order that is significant to this command. First, we must love God. First, we must love the one who first loved us, and then we express our love back to him through obedience. But we got to live as if we were sent by the one who. You want to be fully engaged followers of Jesus Christ, you're going to have to trust and obey, for there is no other way. There is an order to it. First, got to love God. 
Sometimes we want to switch that every once in a while, and I get it, because people are everywhere, and we, we want to love them first. But listen, if we're not loving God first, we won't be able to love people properly, because God is love. He's got to be our source. We can't trust ourselves to know what we're doing, right? We've got to lean on God. Second, we must love the one who is lost. In order to become fully engaged followers of Jesus Christ, we have to seek out the one who is lost and show them mercy and compassion and speak the truth in love. You know, they're, they're called lost for a reason. They need love, but they also need direction, right? But, man, when we're giving them direction, it's not judgment. It's our job to point them to the one who died for them, right? Amen? It's our job to direct them to the way, truth, and life, Jesus Christ. The only one who can take what is dead and make it alive again because he himself is the resurrection and the life. I'm going to be closing here. And in closing... Why Ohio? Why Cleveland? Why venue? Why another church? Because we were sent by the one who. Because we were sent by the one who in order to save the one who. Can't think of a better reason than that, can y'all? Now, for Marla and our family, we are taking another trip. And please know that I told God that I had a peace when I first came down here, a peace from him when we first came up here, I guess, from Texas to Ohio. And I wasn't going to leave without getting that same peace. So please know that. This past 10 years for us has been monumental. It's been a trip, y'all. <laughs> it took time. It took risk, investment, and pain. It took a lot of time praying and meeting and talking and working and time away from our families Time setting up and tearing down, right, Bryn? Each week, time we will never get back. It took risk. The risk of taking chances on locations and people and leaders and ideas and events. The risk of spending money when there wasn't a lot of money to go around. It took investment, all the work and energy and money that was spent to help people, lead people, meeting with those in need and those who wanted to help fill a need, listening to others pour out their hearts and then trying to speak into them words of encouragement. Man, it took some pain. The pain of sacrifice, no pain, no gain, right? The pain of sacrifice, the pain of rejection, the pain of seeing people that God loves and that we love hurting. The pain of not being able to save everyone, not save every marriage or relationship or soul. The pain of betrayal and loss. But can I tell you, as rough as that might have sounded, it was so worth the trip. Because we got to watch God work in people, in situations, in us. And it made it worth the time. We got to see open hearts and minds. The reward of seeing God open the hearts and minds of many made it worth the risk. We got to see relationships restored. And I'm looking at people as I'm talking, and I'm thinking about people as I'm talking, but we got to see relationships restored. I'm talking marriages. We got husbands and wives, but also relationships between mothers and daughters and fathers and sons and sisters and brothers and many, even their relationship with God himself, and it made it worth the investment. We got to see transformed lives. We got to be part of hope renewed. People going from being lost to found and, and us being able to be used to bring hope to the hopeless. It made it worth all the pain. But can I tell you, Vinnie Church, and this is a little bit of a a heavier message than I've had in the past because I feel like I want to leave you with something that motivates you. But everything that has been accomplished through Vinnie Church has been a result of men and women, starting with Pastor Sean of Faith, being obedient to the one who sent them in order to save the one who wandered off. And I want to tell you, it's not over. Can I say that again? It's not over. Amen? Can you guys get behind that? It's not over, y'all. It's not over. God wants to do more. 
He wants to do more. He didn't just send his son to die on a cross because he wasn't all in. He's all in. He wants to do more. But the same God who is the same yesterday, today, and forever still chooses to use men and women who are willing to be obedient. Obedient to the one who in order to save the one who. And maybe that man or woman God wants to use today is you. Maybe you're the one who he wants to send. Are you willing? Are you ready to be obedient? Are you ready to become fully engaged followers of Jesus Christ? Is God speaking to your hearts? Are you ready to respond? It says in Isaiah 6, 8, Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? And I said, Here am I. Not I'm perfect. Not I can do this. Not I have all the gifts and all the strengths. And I am the person for the job. But here am I in all my weaknesses. In all my failures. How many know God knows us best? Here I am. Here am I. This is what I have to offer you, God. But what little I have, I'm willing to give. Send me. I want to pray real quick. I'm going to give you guys two opportunities to respond. The first thing is going to be maybe this morning God spoke to you and you are feeling lost and you don't know if you know God. I want to give you an opportunity to to, to know the one who this morning. Second part is maybe you feel like you've either wandered off or you are not as fully engaged as you would like to be in God speaking to your heart this morning and you want to say to God very simply, send me. Whether it's send me back to my house to be a better parent, whether it's send me back to my workplace to be a better employee, whether it's send me to venue church to serve in different areas, where does God want you to be? Where has he sent you? Let's bow our heads real quick. First of all, if you want to know God for the, and you don't know him, and you desire to take that step of faith to begin engaging with Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, It's very simple. All you got to do is say yes to Jesus. Say, I believe. If you guys want to say this with me as a church, we can do this together. Say, I believe. Jesus, you are real. That you came from heaven to earth to save me. Forgive me for my sins. I want you to be my Lord my Savior, and my friend. Amen. If you said that for the first time, just stick your hand up real quick just so we can be praying with you and encourage you through that. And then the second part is a very simple prayer. This is for those who want to become fully engaged or take one more step toward being more fully engaged. Followers of Jesus Christ, just say, Jesus, you gave your all for me. And I, too, want to be sent by the one who, in order to save the one who. Send me. I'm willing. Amen. If that was you, just stick your hand up real quick just so we can see and we can encourage you and pray with you for that. Amen. Thank you guys so much for another opportunity to speak. And uh, I pray that God minister to your hearts. In the Fully Engaged series, this was the message I was looking forward to the least. Not, not because of Tim, <laughs> because their family. I know what it represented. The reason why we didn't pray over them for both services, because I didn't want to cry twice. But it looks, it looks like I'm going to anyway. Um. Just because they have been an example, those of you that know them, of being fully engaged. Living a life that has not been about them. It's been about others. Making decisions not based upon what they want or what they need, but based upon what they feel like God's telling them and what others need. And so we're we're sad to see it go. But excited for the future. Been praying for the last... A couple years with these guys. 
about the possible transition, about something stirring in his heart, something that I wanted so bad to be able to, to pray and come back to Tim and say, Lord said, you got to stay. Because I know that he would have. But um, unfortunately, I felt a piece about it as well. There were some steps, some things to be accomplished. That he's sending them somewhere and they're obedient they're listening. Thanks for listening to another message from Venue Church. If you're listening to us today and you call Venue your home church, or if you feel led to support the ministry that God is doing here, let me remind you that you can always take advantage of our online giving options. Just go to our homepage and there's a link in the upper right-hand corner that says Donate Online. It's an easy way to stay up to date on all your regular giving. Thanks again for joining us. God bless. We hope to see you again soon.